All right, unicorn vomit. Yeah. Yay. Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things in open source, Linux, anything else that, hey, we find fun, we're going to talk about it, have a good time, all we need to warn you, there might be laughter, so, mm -hmm. you know, if you're allergic to joy, run while you still <laughs> can. <laughs> Lots of fun things to talk about this week. I was talking in the pre-show, I'm on, like, week two of having a test bench in the middle of the studio that I have to avoid to get around because um, I'm lazy and I didn't put it up on the thing I have in the studio to hold the test bench because, oh. you know, nothing's <laughs> more permanent than a temporary solution, right? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to, <laughs> just this afternoon, I'm going to put it on the floor. I'm going to hook it right up because it was right behind the uh, encoder system here in the studio and it was just real easy to plug everything in and I'm like, in and out, week two, it's still on the floor and I'm playing around with it. But why are you playing around with it, Ben? Well, I wanted to find out what the state of FireWire audio interfaces are with PipeWire. And I'm in week two of that, of learning stuff, because um, if I'm going to put something out, it's going to be accurate. You know, I'm not going to like a thing, go yeah. burr, you know, and go use it. And I uh, kind of butted heads with a couple of different ways of getting up and, up and running and like whether or not you should or should not use them. And of course, I want to go back and test them with actual studio sessions, you know, not just plug it in and it kind of works. And this was all triggered because somebody asked in the interfacing Linux forums, like, hey, can I use the FATO drivers? Like, maybe. And it's a good thing that the forums are there because that got that little bit of a craziness going in my head. Well, you need to go try that. I'm like, fine, I'll go try it. And so we're still trying to make that work. Also, last uh -huh. night when we finished Trackmania 2, I had everything cut on. I finished that Doctor Who special recap that jordan and i did like three four weeks ago it's done yeah. it's printed it's encoded it's going to go out tomorrow morning so if you're on patreon and you're like man i wonder what those two guys really think of those first three doctor who specials yeah. with tenet returning because jordan dr. And I, donna right Yay. dr donna and uh because jordan and i both checked out on doctor who after like series two of jody Mm -hmm. Not to do anything with the Jody, it's just the writing was like, yeah, oh, was like Jesus. Yeah. Like we, we, and it wasn't <laughs> like anger or anything. That's what we talk about during the show was there was never like the one thing. It, we just kind of fell off, you know, like you fall off of things. Mm -hmm. that shows that you go watch. Like to this day, I don't know when I quit watching South Park, but I did. Mm, I yeah. did, which is a weird thing. Or The Simpsons, you know, I mean, there, there's always shows like that. And we discuss what brought us back, which I think everybody knows it was 10. I'm like, well, that's one way to fan service set up to the point to where I'm, all right, I'm going to go check it out. So we're going to share our thoughts about that and the first episode with a new doctor, which I think we all uh, really enjoyed. Yes. How incredible. about you, Jill <laughs> Bryan? What's up? What's new? Tell oh, everybody about your shirt. Okay, will do. So I'm wearing a shirt that says, here for that podcasting thing we do. <laughs> I thought Ben would appreciate it. And my Steve husband made sure that I bought it <laughs> from Amazon. <laughs> it's so appropriate. And also, I am heavily getting ready and making preparations for our Linux Chicks LA booth at the Southern California Linux Expo once again. In fact, I'm not just taking care of one booth. I'm taking care of two booths, our Destination Linux booth as well. Um, on the other podcasts that I do. Have you got the glitter? <laughs> yeah, I got the look glitter. But I'm also on the scale uh, PR team, the community outreach team. So you're so going to need I'm, extra glitter. Yeah, I need extra glitter. I'm doing a lot of work for scale. <laughs> but I love it. And to find out all the information, all you have to do is go to www.socallinuxexpo.org. And this is Scale 21X, the 21st annual Southern California Linux Expo, which will take place on March 14th through 17th, 2024 at the Pasadena Convention Center in Pasadena, California. And everyone out there who's watching this can use promo code CHIX or CHICKS for Linux CHICKS on the first page of registra registration to get 50% off your Scale Pass. <laughs> Right on, right on. All right, everybody, let's hop into it because we got some uh, Ubuntu stuff, some Evolution stuff, some OS too. We got an, it, hey, 
an excuse to talk about OS2. And yes, we way, sure do, Vin. <laughs> and a way to cool a Raspberry Pi. But up first is our Yay. Ubuntu. Yeah, so there's great news. And I was so excited for this because we get new shiny things on Ubuntu. So when Ubuntu 24.04, the long-term support edition, is scheduled to come out on April 25th, 2024, it will feature the upcoming Linux kernel 6.8. You mean a, a Linux kernel that hasn't come out? Yes. <laughs> Not an old kernel, but a new one. <laughs> so Linux kernel 6.8 is actually in heavy development right now, but Canonical's Ubuntu kernel team has confirmed that Ubuntu 24.04 LTS, Noble Numbat, yes, it's called Noble Numbat, will be powered by the Linux kernel 6.8 series. <laughs> and Ubuntu 24.04 has lots of cool features, including the upcoming GNOME 46 desktop with an improved Nautilus file manager. And finally, built-in support for WebP image file format. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool, huh, Ben? <laughs> We've been needing that. JPEG In XL. Linux. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I want. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and there's also headless support for X Wayland for those with an NVIDIA GPU. Which Who is has an NVIDIA really cool. GPU? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you might be Team Green. <laughs> I'm Team Everything. I'm, run I'm on an in my Intel Arc A770 right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so for many years when the Ubuntu LTS versions would release, they would ship, like I said earlier, with a much older Linux kernel, but not with this release. Now you will be able to use the latest hardware and all the Linux kernel bells and whistles on Ubuntu LTS. That is just so wonderful. And for those of you that, that, that don't know, most of the time I am running Ubuntu LTS here on the podcast. Right now, I'm, I'm on 23.10 because I was playing with that release when it came out. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to Ubuntu. Uh, I'm going to go to 24.04 when it comes out, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> and I'll still get that newer Linux, shiny Linux kernel, which I'm oh, happy about. Man. I'm, hey, I know a lot of people like really started on um, Debian with <laughs> a spoiler in front box. I mean, on Ubuntu. But yeah, <laughs> uh, it's, it's still around. Like, I mean, it works. It's good that they got everything you can. You can currently test this right now, though. They have a PPA. Yeah. Um, if you want to head over to 9 to 5 Linux, there'll be a link in the show notes. Everything there that you need to get up and running. And you too can play around with 6.8. We were talking about this on um, Saturday on Linux Gamecast. Uh, Pedro's like, man, because he's been running Nobra mm -hmm. or Nobara. Yeah. And he's like, oh, it's breaking. I'm like, oh, my boys are getting old, ain't they? Uh, because the older you get, the more stable you, I know, I know. Yeah. Yes. He's, like, he's finally I, come to that age. Just oh, want things to start working. It's a gradual <laughs> process. It doesn't happen overnight. And yeah. you know what? You could be sitting here right now. You could be 68 years old going, what? It's still going to happen to you. Just mm -hmm. give it time. And there's going to be that like, man, I just want something that'll cut on and cut yeah. off. And you know what? Ubuntu canonical for all their flaws. <laughs> They've been doing a pretty good job just making a Linux distribution, you know? Yeah. They've been around forever. Amazing. And, you know, if you stick around long enough, you always become the feeling, you know, no matter mm -hmm. who you are. So I'm glad they're still pushing that out now. Email clients, right? Yeah. They're neat. They need some improvement on Linux. <laughs> There's like 12 of us out here that run desktop email clients, and we need particular things. And I just saw this. Like strangely, come up at uh, the ZDNet. So I was like, you know what? I want to take a look at it. Finally, this is the Linux email client I've been open for. This is written by Jack Wallen, and he goes through his search to find a good email client on Linux. And, you know, I think there's plenty to choose from. What I do like is that he breaks down what he went through, what he mulled over, right? And he yeah. ended up landing on evolution. And if you have not been paying attention for a long, long time, Evolution used to be a big bloated mess. Like, it was bad. It was like KDE4. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me know what you think in the comments yeah. about that. Um, <laughs> is it good now? Turns out, yes, it is. And it's something that I've switched over to um, because 
But Jack went over, he's like, I need something that supports IMAP, POP, Gmail, and Exchange. And he went through Thunderbird, Claws, KML, Geary, and they all have like their little issues on the side, which I agree with. Mm-hmm. However, the one thing I didn't agree with was Thunderbird having an out-of-date UI. I will argue that. <laughs> I will argue yeah. that. And the reason I will argue <laughs> that is because the new not out-of-date UI for Thunderbird is the reason I'm using Evolution. Now, that's not to say anything negative about the new UI other than I don't like it. So I bounced off of it and I tried to use it a couple of times for a couple of weeks. It wasn't a knee-jerk reaction because I always have that. You have to be self-aware when something changes, like because how easy is it to run into something and go, oh, it's different. I hate it, right? Mm-hmm. And just bounce yeah. off of it and like, no, 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 we need to figure this out. I'm like this just didn't work with my workflow. And so I was myself on the same journey. I'm like, what is the current state of email clients? And well, I ended up back on evolution. Never thought I would be the Mm -hmm. stodgy old evolution person, but you know, it just works. I'm glad that he gave Geary a mention though, because Geary is, it's got all the bits. It's slick, it's modern, but it's too bare bones to be useful for my use cases. Mm. Um, I'm a little sad about that, but yeah, that, this is a fun one from uh, ZDNet. I'm curious, you know, let me know in the comments if you have know something that wasn't mentioned and don't, don't bring up claws. I tried claws. Oh, <sighs> claws yeah. is just as bad as it was 20 years. I mean, okay, bad. It's very retro. You know, I used claws a long time ago and, you know, somebody's like, Hey, pine, no terminal stuff because you know yeah <laughs> I, I might run xfce4 i might run debian but i'm not using a terminal based email client <laughs> yeah you want why because this client. is no longer the 80s and early 90s where i had to do that i have options yeah. now so i don't want to go back and live that dark timeline but yeah. yeah i am go back and try evolution if you haven't or if you're just looking for one but we're such a small market you know i've said this a couple of times Desktop email is not a growth market. We're, we're, we're dying out, man. Mm-hmm. We're, we're dying out. And everybody does everything on the web. Yeah. Well, Artharin actually in chat says uh, he uses it at work because it supports uh, Microsoft Exchange mail servers. And yeah, that's true. I know a lot of people have to use Evolution because of that. And personally, you know, I've gotten used to the new Thunderbird UI, but I appreciate that Evolution still has the old school look and just works. <laughs> especially because for many years before I was using Thunderbird, I was using Silfeed and some terminal clients. <laughs> so I appreciate a, a modern uh, email client. And uh, what's nice is Jack Wallen says it has really good Google Calendar support. So I was happy to hear that because that's something I kind of need <laughs> in my email client. So that's awesome. I wish I could disable that. One thing I would disable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't like the suite. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. Who remembers Netscape Communicator? Yeah. The thing that oh. helped kill Netscape when Netscape's like, we're not a browser. We're a browser. We're a wuzzy wig HTML editor. We're a calendar. We're a everything else. And yeah. Yeah. That didn't work out so well for them. <laughs> well, Vivaldi is using that paradigm now yeah i don't use yeah. because of that. I'm like, <laughs> and, I, I, uh, I need a browser i need I you still, to browse i still you know then old school netscape and then of course the early years of firefox it was the whole suite and actually i still like using the sea monkey web browser because it has all those elements as well the well email. that's cool but you know i gotta yeah. get stuff done so i don't have that luxury <laughs> yeah uh, the <laughs> Like with evolution, what this is one of the things that attracts me to Geary is Geary's like, I, I do email, you know, I, the old Unix philosophy of doing one thing and doing it well. Yeah. That, yeah. That's old school in the roots. So, and I've never run across an application. We were talking about this in the, the pre-show about, you know, even applications as simple as Discord. Discord started out and it just ate Skype's lunch because it did the thing very well. It was basic chat and it did video. And Skype disappeared overnight. But now Discord has been, they just keep trying to add and tack weird stuff on top of it. And I'm like, stick with that core thing you do very well and expand that, make it better instead of just, you know, becoming this amalgam Akira type thing. Yeah. uh, Yeah. Back (laughs) way off track. Sorry about that. But evolution, if I could like get rid of the calendar thing, I'd be even happier because I 
you talk about Google calendars. I'm like, I have a monitor dedicated to Google Chrome and I'm like, you're segregated over there. You don't touch anything <laughs> else. Um, yeah, good times. So yeah. <laughs> up next, speaking at old school. <laughs> yeah. Something I have not touched since the nineties, but it's kind of interesting to bring it back simply because in the nineties, if you were a, of a certain mindset, you would champion anything that was not Microsoft Windows, you know, mm -hmm. BOS, OS2, yeah. um, yes. CP, anything, man, anything other than Microsoft. And I think at one point, Jill, OS2 had a halfway decent shot. Yeah, it sure did. And yeah, we're talking about OS2. Does anyone remember using IBM's OS2 operating system from over three decades ago? Those are those of you viewers who are older, you know that operating system that was actually a joint venture between between IBM and Microsoft. And OS2 was planned to take over for IBM PC DOS, or as most people know, MS DOS, which was sold by Microsoft for PC clones. But after the success of Windows 3.0, the partnership between IBM and Microsoft fizzled out, which was really, really sad. And it was so unfortunate because OS2, with its 32-bit processing and ability to multitask, was a lot, lot faster than Windows 3.0. <laughs> I remember being a big champion of OS2. Oh my gosh, it's so much faster <laughs> than Windows. And so, but sad news, New Mexico State University just announced that on April 15th, 2024, it will shut down its Hobbs OS2 archive and all the support for the IBM OS2 operating system. Oh, sad day. It is one of the, the Hobbs OS2 archive is one of the oldest software archives on the internet. And as Ars Technica states, the archive contains thousands of OS2 games, applications, utilities, software development tools, documentation, and server software dating back to the launch of OS2 in 1987. There's a certain charm in running across OS2 wallpapers from 1990, and even the archive's update policy is a historical gem. Last updated on March 12th, 1999. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? It, it's so cool that it's been around for so many years, but don't fret, we have good news. The fine folks at the Internet Archive have already mirrored it in one big 18.1 gigabyte dot tar file. So it's available on uh, at Internet Archive and possibly more mirrors. So that was awesome to hear. I'm going to be downloading it. I just saw that this morning. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I got to download that tar. Gotta dot get tar. It. <laughs> gotta get 18 gigs. When you think about like um, 18 gigs, I saw that. I'm like, that sounds, uh, that, that would have just broken your brain in the 90s. Yeah, like so like, can you what? imagine? Because like, we were lusting and like, dreaming of, you know, two gig spitty drives. Yeah. I, just, I just took a look at, uh, <laughs> we've been recording for 20 minutes and 45 seconds. File size for that recording is 64 gigs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. What bloat. What yeah, what bloat. bloat. <laughs> um, yeah. Interesting. I, I'm glad they're keeping it around. I mean, Internet Archive yeah. is... Uh, if you don't give money to the Internet Archive and you got some spare change, hook them up because they're doing the good work. No. <laughs> My Steve husband in chat says, OS Tartar, so raw, so real. <laughs> that was good, honey. <laughs> Steve, why, why do you interject? I have to cut that out now. You know, we can't have your potty mouth in the show. <laughs> Aw. Well, I I'm, I'm, was really happy to, to hear that the Archive is not truly dying, especially since I do have a computer that runs OS2 in my vintage computer collection. <laughs> so I was happy to hear it. So I made sure to talk about this on the show. So yeah, I, I don't have um, <laughs> none of that. Man. I'm like, I have to deal with that stuff. Like, I don't want to go back and revisit it. If I want, if I want to see somebody running um, OS2. Oh, what was it? There was a streamer. Um, I think I talked about it on Saturday that was uh, playing some classic games like Windows 95, 98 era. Mm. And he was trying to get up and running with CD-ROM and he had a virtual machine set up and I had to cut it off because he was a bit younger and didn't understand what he was doing. And that was from the era where I was still kind of familiar with Windows. 
Yeah. And I was screaming, not, oh. not, uh, not screaming verbally, but mentally screaming at the uh, stream. And I'm like, you're doing it wrong. Why don't you? I'm like, I can't watch it. Yeah, I can't watch it. <laughs> I can't watch that. Aww. I don't even know if he f eventually figured it out. I hope he did. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get off my lawn. A little bit of Raspberry Pi stuff this week. Uh, if you bought a Raspberry Pi 5, you know that you need a cooler for it. You just mm -hmm. do. Um, mm -hmm, now, yeah. it will run without one, but it'll run very slowly because it will immediately thermal throttle. It's a toasty boy. Mm -hmm. So we've <laughs> started to see, you know, Raspberry Pi Foundation has even released, you know, a very nice, you know, milled aluminum like, heat sink for it that you can pop on. Jill showed it off a couple of times. Mm hmm. And I'm like, okay, we got what was the uh, what was the one Pedro got the uh, ice tower? The yeah, the nice little, little ice tower yeah, we had talked about with years a, ago. With a singular yeah. heat pipe on it, and it was adorable. So <laughs> well, this one, I like, I like no kill like overkill, ladies and gentlemen, and that's where we're at with this uh, overkill cooling. This is a open loop water Aww. cooling solution <laughs> for your Raspberry Pi. We're talking 55C. At three gigahertz, not mm -hmm. 3.14, unfortunately, because that would have been better. But this thing is chunky. Uh, this is an absolute moment of ridiculousness that we need to bring up. Seed Studios made this, and you, you can, like, this is not an AIO. You can plug other stuff. They've, this has been designed to plug other stuff into it. I'll get to that in a minute, but it can keep that super toasty Raspi 5 mm -hmm. nice and cool. And yeah. It is, you know, you initially look at this and you go, oh, okay, that, that's a good joke thing, right? Like, all right, we'll just pick one of those up and like, haha, I'm cool on my pie. But 120 bucks might be on the expensive side for a little gag, right? It, it isn't, it isn't. It does support several pies cooling them simultaneously to keep a cluster cool. So I think that in itself is worth it. <laughs> that's right, ladies and gentlemen. It is open. So you, can cool an entire rack of raspberry pies so then all of a sudden if you don't want a bunch of little buzzy fans and you want some super chill pies hanging out um because i went into the world of rack mounting raspberry pi fours uh just out of curiosity i was like can i get a rack for one and the internet told me no <laughs> best way you can do is you get four but there's some high-end solutions for rack mounting raspberry pies and, you know, just one pie might not be a thing, but if you get that thing running full tilt and it's going and run like something like that might make sense, you know, then you can stay awake at night wondering if it's leaking. It'll be awesome. It'll be great. <laughs> I say surrounded by water cooled PCs that keep me up at <laughs> <Yeah>. night. I wonder <laughs> whether or not they're leaking. Yeah, that's pretty neat, Jill. I, I liked it. I wanted yeah. to throw it in the show. And even if you just get one to hook up to a single Raspberry Pi, like, why not? Why not? Yeah, it's worth like, it. What, what do you do with that Raspberry Pi? And I'm like, eh, it's uh, my Pi Hole <laughs> server, at DNS, you know. Yeah, you know, especially if you want to use it as a Docker client or to compile a kernel, you know, it 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 it, it, it heats up quickly, so it could use that uh, that cooling, and it's so freaking cute. And I was really impressed that it took it from its uh, it. The running temperature from the 70s Celsius uh, to the high 30s, which is really, really good. <laughs> so <laughs> that was pretty impressive. Overclock 3D, I'm going to call you out, though, because I know why you did this. Let's zoom and enhance. Uh, you kinked the hose to get that shot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So don't run it like that, kids. No. You're not going to have a good time. <laughs> You're not. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just be careful with that, especially because, uh, you know, these, these are fitted. If you're mm -hmm. familiar with um, your typical AIOs, you get them, they're all, you know, it's an all-in-one. You just, you know, put the radiator in, but then this you're actually going to have to fit, and you're going to have to bleed and get the air out, and so do keep that in mind. But more than likely, if you buy something like that for, you know, just the overkill lulls, you're going to hook it up and just, like, leave it in the corner anyway with the rest of the yeah. stuff that you buy that looks <laughs> like that. And, of course, the fan is RGB, so you got yes. that to look forward to. All right, unicorn vomit. Yeah. Yay. And For the leaky, win. leaky unicorn vomit yeah. all over your <laughs> desk. It'll be brilliant. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap us up for this week's weekly Daily Wednesdays. You like what we do? 
become a patron, head over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Teamcast. We got a gang of stuff, including this show, the live and uncut. You're like, man, that 30 minute thing was pretty dope. We typically record about an hour each yeah. and every week. Put that in podcast format and give you the video version. <laughs> also, we give you the show because, you know, YouTube's kind of crazy with ads. There's a video version that you can download or just watch live on Patreon with no ad, completely ad free. It's brilliant. And um, access to our Discord and a gang of other stuff. Go check it out if you're interested. If not, that's cool too. We can still be friends. You can come over and we can play Sonic the Hedgehog. All right. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for this week. Let's pull up some music. Also, yeah. interfacinglinux.com. Go check that out. Somebody's oh, looking yeah. for help building a PC in the forums. Ha, ah, there you go. There's your ad. Deal with it. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Here's and some credits. <laughs>